Muscles. We have over 600 of them. They make up between one third and half of our total weight and, together with connective tissue, they support us, keep us upright, and help us move. Whether or not bodybuilding is your hobby, muscles require constant attention because the way you treat them in everyday life determines whether they will grow or atrophy. Let's say you are standing in front of a door, ready to open it. Your brain and muscles are perfectly prepared to help you achieve this goal. First, your brain sends a signal to the motor neurons in your arm. When they receive the message, they fire, causing the muscles to contract and relax, which pulls the bones in your arm and produces the necessary movement. As the challenge grows, the brain's signals become larger and it groups more motor units to help you perform the task. But what if the door is made of solid iron? At this point, your arm muscles alone will not be able to generate enough tension to open it, so your brain asks for help from other muscles. You plant your feet, contract your abs, and tense your back, generating enough force to pull and open it. Your nervous system enhances the resources you already have. Other muscles to meet the demand. As all this happens, your muscle fibers undergo a type of cellular alteration. When exposed to tension, they suffer microscopic damage. Which, in this context, is a good thing. In response, the damaged cells release inflammatory molecules called cytokines, which activate the nervous system to repair the damage. This is where the magic of muscle development happens. The greater the damage to the muscle tissue, the more the body will need to repair itself. The resulting cycle of damage and repair eventually makes the muscles larger and stronger as they adapt to progressively greater demands. Since our bodies have already adapted to most everyday activities, they usually do not produce enough tension to stimulate new muscle growth. To grow new muscles, something called hypertrophy. Our cells need to be exposed to greater loads than they are used to. If your muscles are not regularly exposed to some resistance, they will shrink, a process known as muscle atrophy. In contrast, exposing the muscle to a high level of tension, especially while it is stretching, something called eccentric contraction, produces effective conditions for new growth. However, muscles depend on more than just activity to grow. Without proper nutrition, hormones, and rest, your body would never be able to repair damaged muscle fibers. Proteins in our diet preserve muscle mass, providing the necessary components for new tissues in the form of amino acids. Adequate protein intake, along with naturally occurring hormones, such as insulin like growth factor and testosterone helps bring the body to a state where tissue is repaired and developed. This vital process mainly occurs when we are resting, especially at night, while we sleep. Gender and age affect the repair mechanism. So young men with more testosterone have an advantage in the muscle growth game. Genetic factors also play a role in the ability to form muscles. Some people have more robust immune responses to muscle damage and are more able to repair and replenish damaged muscle fibers, increasing their muscle growth potential. The body responds to the demands you impose on it. If you push your muscles, eat correctly, rest, and repeat, you will create the conditions for the largest and strongest muscles possible. It's the same with muscles as it is with life. Significant growth requires challenges and tension. Three mechanisms that make muscles grow. Underlying all progression of natural muscle growth is the ability to continually put more stress on the muscles. This stress is a major component involved in the growth of a muscle and disrupts homeostasis within your body. The stress and subsequent disruption in homeostasis causes three main mechanisms that spur on muscle growth. 1. Muscle tension. In order to produce muscle growth, you have to apply a load of stress greater than what your body or muscles had previously adapted to. How do you do this? The main way is to lift progressively heavier weights. This additional tension on the muscle helps to cause changes in the chemistry of the muscle, allowing for growth factors that include MTOR activation and satellite cell activation. Muscular tension also most dramatically affects the connection of the motor units with the muscle cells. Two other factors help to explain why some people can be stronger 
but not as big as other people. 2. Muscle Damage If you've ever felt sore after a workout, you have experienced the localized muscle damage from working out. This local muscle damage causes a release of inflammatory molecules and immune system cells that activate satellite cells to jump into action. This doesn't mean that you have to feel sore in order for this to happen, but instead that the damage from the workout has to be present in your muscle cells. Typically soreness is attenuated over time by other mechanisms. 3. Metabolic Stress If you've ever felt the burn of an exercise or had the pump in the gym, then you've felt the effects of metabolic stress. Scientists used to question bodybuilders when they said the pump caused their muscles to become larger. After more investigation, it seems as though they were onto something. Metabolic stress causes cell swelling around the muscle, which helps to contribute to muscle growth without necessarily increasing the size of the muscle cells. This is from the addition of muscle glycogen, which helps to swell the muscle along with connective tissue growth. This type of growth is known as sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and is one of the ways that people can get the appearance of larger muscles without increases in strength. Conclusion In order for muscle breakdown and growth to occur, it is necessary to force the muscles to adapt by creating stress that is different from the previous threshold that the body has already adapted to. This can be achieved by lifting heavier weights, continuously changing exercises to damage more muscle fibers, and pushing the muscles to fatigue while getting a pump. After the workout is completed, the most important part begins, which is to rest adequately and provide ample fuel to the muscles so that they can regenerate and grow. Comment below if you liked the content and leave your like to help us continue delivering quality content. Thank you.